Hello everybody, this is Gregory with The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to talk about Uma Thurman and do a retrospective on her career. Now before I begin, if you appreciate my content at all, please, if you haven't done so already, like this video, post a comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell so new episodes come fresh to you, and of course check out the back catalog. Now we have talked about Uma Thurman before in our series, our playlist on cheating scandals where we talk about how her husband Ethan Hawke had an affair with a woman and ended up marrying that woman. My first impression or recollection, I should say, of Uma Thurman is from the 80s. So she's 53 years old and when this video comes out, I probably would have just turned 50 because my birthday is in the Capricorn range. And so I grew up with Uma Thurman to a large extent. Certainly she became iconic with Pulp Fiction. I do remember her for the first time as who is this woman looking her up as much as I could look at somebody up in 1989 and the credits of a movie in Dangerous Liaisons, which my parents loved this movie. It was based on a French novel. Later on, uh, there was another version of it, of Valmont, uh, which was not as good with Annette Bening. And I think Colin Firth was the was played of Valmont. I could be wrong on that. But Dangerous Liaisons is the better version, I think. It's got John Malkovich and Glenn Close and Michelle Pfeiffer. And Uma Thurman is the ingenue who is seduced by Malkovich's character because Glenn Close wants to get back at a man who spurred her by having Malkovich's character, Valmont, ruin his future prospective bride. And so she caught my eye in that movie. Again, quite lovely, quite innocent. As you guys know from my Sexy Saturday series, I like the ingenue, the sweet, doe-like, innocent girl. I don't like the super sexy girls. So if you look at her in Dangerous Liaison, um, she has that to, to a bill. She fits it perfectly. Also, just incidentally, Keanu Reeves is in that movie. And of course, as, as he is in any movie that he's got to do an accent, he's woefully cast and he's horrifically bad in that movie. In retrospect, after she did Liaisons, I went back and watched Johnny Be Good, which I had watched before. So Johnny Be Good is a, a, a movie that takes place in high school where Anthony Michael Hall, the nerd from 16 Candles, and of course, from Brian from The Breakfast Club, uh, and, and he was in Weird Science as well. So, I mean, these were movies that were very iconic to me. He plays a high school football player. He's the quarterback. It's just like, what? But later on, if you know about Anthony Michael, he got kind of brawny, so to speak. But she plays the, his girlfriend, and Robert Downey Jr. is the best friend. And so this is, uh, who who's also in Weird Science, by the way. So this is before, of course, he, he got more iconic a few years later doing movies like Chaplin and then, of course, his chronicle drug problems and Less Than Zero and all those movies. And then, of course, he's, he's very famous now and he's for sure going to get an Academy Award nomination for Oppenheimer. So it took her time to work her way up. So Dangerous Liaisons was, was about 1990-ish and she did some small roles, but really when you look at it, it's Pulp Fiction in 19. Uh, 94 -ish, that really catapulted her to fame Mia uh, I remember going to a costume party I was in college and my girlfriend who later was my wife at the time dressed up as Mia at this party with the knife uh, and, and so forth and, and, and uh, the uh, syringe in her heart and all that so the character of Mia probably is one of the two most iconic roles that, that Uma Thurman ever did and um, she got Academy Award nomination for this. She got a BAFTA nomination for this. And you know, when you watch it again, I, I think she's fine. I don't think she's doing anything special in the movie, but you know, she was definitely camouflaged with the black hair and the short hair because in all of her roles, and really when you think about all of her subsequent roles, the majority of her roles, she has her natural kind of dirty blonde hair. So she does that movie, which catapults her to fame. And then if you look at her 90s, of, um, it, you know, it's, it's hit and miss. She does Beautiful Girls. Uh, which is a movie with with young it, it's it's kind of like uh, it's got Timothy Hutton and It's got young Portman. It's got a uh, very young Portman like 12 year old Portman But it's got Mira Servino, Uma Thurman and I can't remember who's the other girl like the love interest to Timothy Hutton and his friends the movies are right then she does truth about cat and cats and dogs I remember seeing this in the theater. This is when we were trying to make Janine Garofalo a movie star after reality bites <laughs> And uh, Uma Thurman is not pretty in this movie. And look, we'll talk about her looks in a second, but they make her look really kind of like pale and cocky, but it's the, she's the beautiful woman, Jenny Garofalo is the ugly woman, and they're kind of vying for the same guy. So she's hit and miss in a lot of these movies. 1997, of course, she does Batman and Robin, where she plays uh, Poison Ivy. And 
I think, you know, this movie is, is really lambasted. I don't really think, I don't have a problem with her character in this movie. I think she does a, a pretty good job uh, as that role. In 97, she also does Gattaca, where she meets, of course, Ethan Hawke. We talked about in that episode, that's where they met. She's pretty good in this movie. Of course, it's the movie that, that has the breakout role of Jude Law before he has the true breakout role in Talented Mr. Ribley. And it's a sci-fi dystopian novel uh, movie that actually, you know, is, is quite present in that in the movie, Jude Law is like the, at that point you can kind of do designer children and Jude Law's character is the designer children child. And her, his brother uh, is, is uh, Ethan Hawke's character who was conceived naturally. And it kind of deals with a lot of these, these uh, I guess things you could see now at 25 years later about how we're trying to create des designer children and so forth in vitro. She's the love interest that they meet in that movie and they, they get married. And then again, just just kind of hit and miss. She does the Avengers back in '98. Um, that's the movie with Uma with uh, Ray Fiennes, and you know it's all right. She does Sweet and Low Down, The Golden Bowl in 2000. This was her 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 attempt to do a British period movie, kind of Merchant Ivory movie. She's fine in it. I think her British accent is is fine. And then of course she does Kill Bill, and the Kill Bill is probably her most iconic role. So when when she passes away, when they have to show the film reel for her it's probably going to be her in kill bill in this movie i mean look i'm not a big tarantino fan i've talked about it in the two episodes that we have on tarantino one is ranking the directors fincher man tarantino and uh i can't remember who the other one is um that we talk about there and also talk about in the episode i did with my co-host where we did uh tarantino versus fincher who would you rather be i'm not a big fan of tarantino's work as i get older but you know the movie the movie stylized, and I think she does a good job, and it was an exhausting shoot for her, and she had to train forever to, to, to get uh, proficient with the sword and so forth and all the fight sequences. And look, I, I think your mileage on Tarantino may vary, um, but no one no, no one can doubt that she holds the, that movie. I mean, she's got the charisma to hold that movie. And then what you see after that is just a lot of hit and miss after that. Be Cool is the John Travolta movie. Nothing special about it. My Super Ex-Girlfriend in 2006. This is the one with Luke Wilson's her boyfriend. And then he dumps her and then he finds out that she's got superpowers and it's kind of like her dealing with, with the breakup rage on how to deal with that. And understand by 2006, we're already looking at, you know, like a, a 39-year-old Uma Thurman. So as is customary, even though many would consider her to be very attractive when she was younger, you know, Hollywood has no problem phasing out the old especially if they don't have a lot of acting talent and bringing in the new and you kind of see that with the roles that she ends up getting in the teens uh where there's just not much there so she has a little scene in percy jackson and the olympians and then if you look at her movies 2012 bellamy and playing for keeps 2013 she's in movie 43 and nymphomaniac and then lars van Trier, what can you say 2014 she does three movies that don't even have uh, any link on them in, in Wikipedia. The Mundane Goddess, The Gift, and Jump. 2018, The Con is On, The House That Jack Built, Down a Dark Hall. Just just not really doing much at all. Um, in terms of television, I most recently saw her in Super Pumped. Super Pumped is a Netflix limited release series that details the founding of Uber. It's got Joseph Gordon. Levitt as the founder of Uber, and she's in there playing Ariana Hutchinson in this kind of, I, I, I mean, look, when, when she came on as dressed up as Ariana Huffington, I didn't even recognize her. And then after a little while, I looked at her, I was like, oh, that's Uma Thurman. And that's where we're at with Uma Thurman now, is like her career is, there's not much there. There's not much there. She is slated to be in the sequel to Charlize Theron's Old Guard, the Netflix action movie where Charlize, and we have a retrospective here on her she plays that immortal who can fight so she's in the sequel so I mean, it's not like she's not getting roles but certainly her career is never going to get back to what it was probably i would say and that peak was between pulp fiction and kill bill you know that that mid to late 90s early knots period where she was at her peak peak beauty and so forth in terms of her personal life she dated gary oldman one of the greatest chameleon actors of all time and in fact they were married in the early 90s and that uh, they only lasted a couple years and then she got with Ethan Hawke and Ethan Hawke and her had two children Maya Hawke is 
an up and coming actress. Uh, again, my mileage on her varies depending on what movie she's in. No doubt she's getting in gigantic movies. You look, she was, of course she got her break on Stranger Things, but then she was in uh, Wes Anderson's Asteroid City. And most recently she was in uh, Maestro uh, playing the eldest daughter of Leonard Bernstein. Uh, and there's that great scene between her and, and Cooper where she asks Cooper Bernstein if he's in fact a homosexual. And, and, and it's a good scene, but both, both of them play very well. So, and she also did a movie with her father, Ethan Hawke. And so if you look at like kind of like these three, like Ethan Hawke has had a very steady career. We have an episode here on him. And Maya Hawke is rising. Uma Thurman, sadly, you know, she's in her 50s. She's going to get roles here and there. I don't think I don't think there's ever going to be a time where people, uh, where she won't get a role. But I mean, her, sadly, it's just the way it is with women in Hollywood, right? They have this peak time and then they're ushered out. And you see that with Uma Thurman. Now, later after Ethan Hawke, because they, uh, they had their last kid in 2003 and then they, in 2002, then they, they separated in 2003 and they divorced in 2005. Then she was dating this guy on and off, some European guy that I had never heard of and I want to make sure I get his name right. Our pod Busson in 2007. And Busson and her had an up and down relationship. Uh, they got engaged and they, divorced, they, they, broke, they, they were dating, then they got engaged and they broke up the engagement. Then they got back together and then she got knocked up and had her second, her third kid, I should say, her first kid with this Busan guy. And then they broke up again. So she has full custody of this kid and this kid's 10 years old. Uh, Uma Thurman is the, the, you know, you look at her politics, it's, it's classic liberal, gun control, Democrat, all the, the things that you would find in the typical Hollywood weirdos. Now, in terms of her looks, I think, I think most people would say that Uma Thurman at her peak. And some people would say Kill Bill maybe is her peak, even though she's you know 33 in that movie or so. I would say it was Dangerous Liaison. But she always had a great body, you know, tall, statuesque. She she got her fame as modeling. That's how she got her first movie roles as modeling. Her face is unique. I, I And I think like when she was younger, she kind of looked more of the Brooke Shields-y, like baby face beauty, like in, in Dangerous Liaisons in her early 90s roles. And as she got older, I think the the she has like an aquiline face to use the old adjective for eagle like like an aquiline nose. Her face is not the prettiest, it, it, but her body is great. But I think unlike maybe some other actresses who kind of had a prettier face, I think maybe that was held against Uma, Uma Thurman in terms of her acting and that she didn't have that classically beautiful face. In some ways, I wouldn't say she has a masculine face. But I would say that she doesn't have a classically beautiful face, kind of like a Taylor Swift. You could say like Taylor Swift maybe has a nice body, but her face, no offense to the Swifties, her face is not like super beautiful. I think Uma Thurman does have a prettier face at her peak than Taylor Swift did at her peak. But I think there's something to that. In terms of her acting, I think she's a moderately talented actress. I would not say that um, she's a great actress. And the fact that she got one Academy Award nomination, I think is is right. I think, I think that's where it does belong and maybe uh, I, yeah, I'd say one is one. I, I don't think she necessarily deserves one for Kill Bill. She got some Golden Globe nominations for Kill Bill, but Golden Globes, you know, the Hollywood Foreign Press, is, they, 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 you can't take them seriously. So I think I think she had moderate talent. She could do the period movies. She could do the action. She she had moderate talent. I think in that ten year window, she had a good career, and I wish her the best. Hopefully, she, you know, she continues to find work in Hollywood and seems to be a great mom for her three kids and so forth. So I do wish her the best. Guys, post in the comments, what's your history with Uma Thurman? I would like to hear from you. Until next time, take care. God bless.